Welcome to Meet the Amazon Leader, a new series where we speak with executives at Amazon to learn about their path, passions, and perspectives. Today, we're joined by Beryl Tomei, Amazon's Vice President of Last Mile Delivery and Technology. Beryl, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Howard. So you have such an interesting career path and journey, and we want to unpack it all today. But let's start at the beginning. Who is Beryl, and what is your story? I'm Canadian. I grew up in Toronto. I have a math and computer science degree from the University of Waterloo. My final internship was at Amazon, and I joined full-time in 2005 as a software development engineer, and have been with the company for almost 18 years. Today what I work on is last mile delivery, where our teams are chartered with getting packages over to customers. I have the best doggo in the world. Her name is Luna, she's an Esky. And since Seattle got a hockey team last year, I've been going to a lot of cracking games to cheer them on. How do you describe your job? So last month, delivery is all about delivering packages to customers. And there are a lot of hard technical problems in the, in the space where we also have to deal with the physical world and the variances you see in geographic diversity or the types of deliveries that you do, along with human behavior, where you have to be resilient in the systems that you build to account for that. Ultimately though, if you've seen a Navy delivery van with the Amazon smile painted on it, then you've seen a bit of what we do. So you were very entrepreneurial in high school. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your passion and how you turned it into a business? I loved music in high school and I became obsessed with a band called Radiohead. When I was 15, I built a fan site. At the time, social media didn't exist, so the only way a fan could get news and information about a band was through a fan site. Eventually, it became pretty popular, and the band noticed. They started sending me swag, exclusive news, and even after-party passes where I actually got to meet them in person, which was really exciting. In my final year of high school, I was contacted by a startup that wanted to purchase the site because they were creating a community of all of these fan sites. I agreed to it, and that money funded my college education. Looking back at that time, I was 15. I was really awkward and introverted, but I did spend every moment I had free from my schoolwork on this fan site and really had a ton of passion and perseverance and worked really hard at it. I think it's a good example of when you have those things and work really hard at something, you get something pretty neat and cool out of it. Now, you attended the University of Waterloo and you majored in math and computer science. Can you tell us a little bit more about that time in your life? Waterloo is a great school. I had a great time there and they have a really strong set of technical programs, math and computer science as well as engineering. The other thing they've pioneered is the co-op program, and this is what we call internships in Canada. Their co-op program was created in the 50s, and the way it works is you do six co-op terms that are four months each. So by the time you graduate, you actually have two full years of real work experience. My final term was at Amazon, and I'm very grateful for that time because you know, a lot of the things I built actually got to customers. But it was, it, was a, it was a great school to attend. So you joined Amazon, and what's been your career path since then? I joined full-time as a software development engineer in 2005. I spent about a year in retail working on our website, then heard about this ebook reader that another team was working on, and got really excited because I love to read, and I thought, I want to go work on that. You might guess that that was the first Kindle, and we launched in November 2007. To our surprise and delight, the device sold out in just five and a half hours, and we knew we had a product at our hands that customers were just gonna love. At that point, I made the transition to people management, wanted to try my hand at it, and stayed in devices for about eight years, working on a number of different products. At that point, I wanted to do something different, learn something new, challenge myself in different ways, and the great thing about Amazon is there are so many options for what you can do and it's really easy to switch. So I ended up in operations working on last mile delivery. I was one of the first team members and had to go build tech uh, technical teams. 
and, and today I'm, I'm still there. I've been there nine years. But a few years ago, I also made a big transition, which was going from managing purely technical teams to also running businesses, which was a pretty scary experience for me because it's just not something I'd done before and I had to learn it. So the first few months was a lot of that, a lot of a little bit being scared, but a lot of learning. But I've come to really love it and enjoy it in the end. Are there any times or any moments from working in devices that really stand out to you? In 2008, Oprah wanted to interview Jeff Bezos about the Kindle and also give away to her audience as part of her favorite things, Kindles. I was lucky enough to go on that trip and got to help make sure the technical aspects went well. After we recorded it, our group, including Jeff, uh, went out to dinner to celebrate. And when I walked into the room and I was looking around for a spot to sit at, the individual sitting across from Jeff stood up and said, I interact with them frequently enough. Why don't you sit across from him so you can, you can talk to him tonight? I was pretty floored because I was one of the most junior people in the room and it's just not something that ever happened to me before. It made me feel valued and like an equal part of that group. That's something that stayed with me for the past 15 years as a great lesson in how to be a good ally and sponsor and just how to look out for someone and give them an opportunity that otherwise they may just never get. And it's something I try to emulate to this day. Are there any moments from your time working on last mile delivery that stand out to you? One of the first things we worked on in last mile delivery was the launch of Prime Now, which, is our, which was our one hour delivery service back in 2014. And from the day that we decided we were gonna go ahead with this product to when customers saw it was only 111 days. And when you think about all the things that had to happen in that amount of time from all of the pieces we had to build for customers, including a brand new application, as well as all the way to the delivery portions, there was just so much to do. But we had a small group of people, a short amount of time, a lot of passion and excitement and a desire to solve a hard problem. We got something really great out of it that customers loved. What are you most proud of accomplishing at Amazon? I'm most proud of all of the hard problems that we've been able to solve and our teams have been able to solve in last mile delivery. I'll touch on a few examples. The first is around mapping, where our vision there is being able to map out the entire physical world in virtual form. This helps us gain an understanding so we can, we can better complete deliveries. So it's things like road segments, road networks, um, as well as customer preferences and anything specific to that geography. Some of this then feeds into the second item, which is routing, our routing technology, where we take all of the customer orders that are coming in and we break them up into routes that are, supposed, that are meant to be safe, achievable, and meet customer needs. There are some very hard computer science problems in that space as well around how we construct these routes in the way that we want. Third and final is a more recent product that we've been working on, which is called Fleet Edge. And that is a computer with sensors, including external facing cameras that we're installing in our fleet so that we can gain that better understanding of the world, including factors related to safety, like traffic lights or stop signs. Overall though, I'm really proud of what the teams have been able to accomplish from a technical innovation perspective in last mile delivery. Speaking of technology, what are your tips for leading large tech teams? I feel fortunate to have started as an engineer, which has helped me to understand what that looks like and relate so I can better lead tech teams. I have many tips here, but I'll share one that I think is really important and that is around how to balance short-term business objectives against the long-term architectural health of the systems that we're building. When we don't strike that balance well, what ends up happening is you accumulate technical debt, which can actually slow you down and slow down your delivery for customers. 
So it's really important to focus on architecture and have that long-term view and balance it against the immediate pieces we have to do for customers. How do you instill a culture of innovation in an organization? When I worked in devices, uh, there were four parallel new products we were investing in. The first one never saw the light of day. The second one, which I worked on, was Fire Phone. And we know that that product was not successful. In fact, I would probably characterize it as one of the biggest failures in Amazon's history. The third and fourth were Echo with Alexa and Fire TV, which have been incredibly successful products for, for our customers. And the, the big thing here is we planted all of these seeds and we knew that not all of them might work out, but it's all about taking risk so that we can actually invent big things. If we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have Fire TV or Alexa today. So uh, instilling a culture of innovation in an organization and making that a focus and having that long-term view is incredibly important for our customers. Has there ever been a time where a leader has challenged you to innovate even more? Every year at Amazon, we go through an annual planning cycle where we produce a document for each organization that outlines their roadmap for the following year. We were doing this a few years ago for last mile delivery and very excited to present our plan. We thought we had a good plan and we brought it to the senior leader we were presenting to who read the document and said, yep, this is a good plan, but it's so boring. Where are all the big ideas? And that was an eye opener for me because he was right, we totally missed it. And we were very focused on the next 12 to 18 months and lost that pipeline of really big, crazy ideas that are longer term. We actually went back and got into a room and brainstormed a number of crazy moonshot ideas we might wanna do many years out. One of those ideas actually led us to building a part of our organization, hiring a whole team to experiment and prototype these things. To this day, they're still doing that work, and um, they work on a three to five year horizon, which you know, leads to future innovation. It was a good lesson for me to then, from then on, create a culture of innovation and thinking big on a regular basis and creating that focus, because that pipeline is really what sets you up well for inventing for customers in the long term. How have you evolved as a leader during your time at Amazon? With time and experience, I think all of us evolve and, and adapt in many different ways, and I'm no different. But one big way in which I've evolved has been around um, relating to what I'm like as a person and my education, which is I like data, I'm very analytical, I like structure, I like logic, but that doesn't always uh, go well with the human aspect of things, which I really had to work at. So the biggest adjustment I would say I've had to make has been leading with empathy, where um, you empathize with others, you create trusting relationships, you support and help others and assume good intentions. So making that transition I've found has been really important in also building long-term sustainable organizations. What are some of the mistakes that you've made as an engineer? When I was working on the retail website, I made a code change to the order confirmation page, which did not go well. This page is the one you see when you buy something. It, we show your order details and then similar products you might want to purchase. Now, if you imagine this page, blank white, for several hours on actual Amazon.com, then you might just feel a sliver of the terror I felt six months out of school. It was traumatizing. I had a really tough time with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about what do you learn from that experience and how do you improve? So both for myself and our technology systems, that led to a lot of great actions to prevent future similar occurrences. Are there any other challenges that you had to overcome? One piece of feedback later on in my career that I got repeatedly was to speak up more in meetings, especially in larger settings. This is something I'd struggled with for a long time for two reasons. One was confidence, and the second was a desire to want to add value to the discussion. 
For confidence, what's worked really well for me has been knowing your stuff, along with a lot of practice and preparation so that you actually feel comfortable. And one of the things I did, it, what I do frequently is ahead of a discussion, I'll try to come up with questions that might get asked to prepare for it. For the other one around wanting to add value, I got a really good piece of advice on this a few years ago, which was these larger meetings are a really efficient setting to align on vision, mental models, have debates on big decisions we have to make, or an opportunity for us to teach something to the full audience. And one additional thing uh, there is, you know, things that were obvious in my head I realize that are not always obvious to other people, and I think that holds true for all of us. So just recognizing that you should still say that thing, which adds value, was a, was a good insight. What inspires you as a leader? I am inspired daily by the fact that we can invent on behalf of customers. And we have many different customer types in last mile delivery. We have end customers that we deliver packages to, and we've really worked at, over the past few years, building our transportation network and technology capabilities to be able to deliver at faster and faster speeds, which we know customers really appreciate. We also work with a lot of small business owners and enable them to have and run their own delivery business. And I've talked to a number of these owners who are just always so excited to be able to do this. And some of them do it with their families too, which I know they just really appreciate. Finally, I'm really inspired by all of the work we're able to do uh, here on sustainability. And specifically, one of the biggest things we're working on is electrifying our delivery fleet. So how important is community engagement to you in your leadership philosophy? Community engagement is incredibly important. In 2020, we launched our community delivery program where we use our transportation network to deliver meals to underserved communities. Since then, we've delivered over 30 million meals. But aside from that, there's a lot we want to do in our organization, too, and we have a few ways in which we do that. The first is we have a volunteer day that's annual. It's aligned to Amazon's Global Month of Volunteering in September. So we take the day off from our regular work activities and encourage our teams to go volunteer and just do something in the community. Second, I have a number of incredibly passionate individuals on my team where we've given them the time and space and you know, lending them my voice so that they can have that bigger impact. Third and final, I'm excited to be sponsoring four community events this year in different cities. But overall, it, it continues to be a very important part of how we operate as an organization. What advice do you have to the future leaders of tomorrow? My advice would be to be comfortable, being uncomfortable, and challenge yourself to learn and grow. And that takes a certain amount of hunger and curiosity to learn. The three things I emphasize are, first, put yourself in uncomfortable situations. For example, if you're really struggling with public speaking, then find every single opportunity you can find to do public speaking and practice it, because you will get better in the end. Second is, every interaction is an opportunity to learn something. So use those moments and absorb and soak up as much as you can. Third and final, when you don't know something, then seek out an expert that you can learn from so that you get better. Uh, so get out there, get uncomfortable, and learn more things. OK, so rapid fire questions. OK. Dog or cat? Dog. Vacation or staycation? Staycation. Aisle or window seat? Window seat. Mountain or seaside? Mountain. Texting or talking? Texting for sure. Star Trek or Star Wars? Oh, that's a tough one. I'm going to say Star Wars. Queen or Led Zeppelin? Queen for sure. You're a big Queen fan. I'm a huge Queen fan. Pineapple on pizza? Yes, love it. <laughs> All right, Beryl, you're such an inspiration to so many people at this company and around the world. Thanks for what you do. Thank you, Howard.